Dhananjay Sinha joins in from Systematics. We've got Kunal Botra and Naresh Mirani too joining in on the show as always. Kunal, let me come to you first. It's choppy, though in a relatively narrow band. Of course, we've seen wilder swings and many other days. But what is it that you're making of the market texture? Yeah, too much of choppiness, not uh, anything uh, which signals any kind of a trend reversal or uh, you know a trend coming intact for uh, you know, the indices. So I think we've neither broken below the 24 1750 mark on the nifty we've not uh, managed to break uh, the 25000 mark also on the nifty on the upside even after a you know very strong kind of an initial you know first few minutes of a gap up for both the nifty as well as for the bank nifty so i think that's the concern for the markets on an intraday basis we'll just have to wait by for uh, the indices to start signaling uh, you know some kind of a trend before we look at uh, you know directions being initiated on the indices as of now it looks like a choppy market and the concern for the markets in the last uh, you know five seven days is uh, not just the choppiness for the indices but the market breadth which gets uh, you know onto a much more uh, higher level of deterioration whenever there is any kind of an intraday volatility i think that's keeping the traders on the edge otherwise i think it's a market uh, when you look at the indices which is just about flattish to uh, you know slight negative yeah, that's the take coming in on the index right now. Dhananjay, hi. How is it that you're dissecting the market right now? All those China concerns, I guess, are ebb to rest because we were just culling out the data as to how much the FII outflows have been from both China as well as India month to date. And China is standing at a very, very tall figure still. Uh, that arrested. What about the earnings season and the color on them so far? So I think uh, from a market standpoint, it has been a market that has seen a lot of rotation over the last uh, seven, eight months, I would say. Uh, and, and generally, it has been uh, buoyant. But I think over the last, I, I would say currently, uh, you know, things have become a little uncertain, quite apart from the fact that over the last quarter or so, uh, there has been some concern with respect to earnings outlook uh, and, and the economy in general. So I think uh, what is now happening is that uh, while the flows have been a little choppy from a, a global standpoint, there is a concern with respect to uh, the uh, uh, with the valuation sector. I think what is catching up now is the fact that the uh, the 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 uh, you know uh, some sort of negative uh, uh, you know trend that had emerged with respect to earnings has actually deepened this quarter. So if you look at it uh, by and large, uh, you know the Consumer space is actually also disappointed, notwithstanding the fact that people had expected a better rural demand. We have seen Dabur that has actually disappointed and many other companies also. Tata uh, Consumer yesterday came up with a result, result which basically shows that there is some margin uh, sort of contraction. You know, other companies are also showing, you know, if you look at the consumer space, they are seeing uh, margin pressure. Companies are trying to ensure that they are uh, ensuring that their market share remains we have seen in autos, for instance, there is a significant contraction in volume, especially passenger vehicles. There is a rising inventory levels there. I would say even, I would say uh, commercial vehicle, etc. I think what has uh, somewhat been on the positive side is the, is the IT space, <clears throat> where uh, there is some traction as far as the deal wins are concerned. There is some confidence with respect to BFSI space. That's the common thing that is coming around uh, from the IT space, there is some expansion in margin sector. So I think there is some select uh, positivity that is happening. Likewise, I would say the pharma sector has actually been doing well because of the churn, people are trying to get into more of pharma stocks. Uh, by and large, I would say the banking sector has been under a lot of regulatory um, you know, issues with respect to the and I think there is a lack of counter cyclical buffer because of the peak levels of uh, credit deposit ratio and the banks are struggling on the deposit front. So essentially for them to sort of scale up their leverage and, 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 and uh, protect their uh, earnings ratio, I think those are things that are kind of very uh, uh, concerning from a lending standpoint, lender market standpoint, you've seen NBFCs, microfinance showing some rise in uh, NPS, etc. So I think the choice for the market is actually getting fairly limited. Uh, people were trying to, uh, you know, uh, look at consumer stocks that did very well, but I think the disappointed numbers, disappointing numbers have seen a correction. So I think people are sort of, you know, looking at pharma, ITM, some send some select names uh, from a market standpoint. So I think it's kind of a fairly choppy market. You know, uh, there is some kind of rotation. There is very wide 
uh, correction and strong correction that happens when uh, is happening when there is a significant disappointment as far as the results are concerned. So I think that's the broader context of the market. Okay, so that's a detailed uh, broader context of the market. We'll discuss those individual sectors and segments in a bit. But first, let me take it across to Nuresh. Uh, Nuresh, today the India WIX has taken a bit of a spike. And while HDFC Bank Reliance are doing the heavy lifting and even Bajaj Auto for that matter, on the flip side, it's about IT being under the weather and then Kotak Mahindra Bank, which is dragging its feet by almost 30 points. Nuresh, the question on the markets, I think you'll have to unmute yourself. Uh, so we continue to see this uh, uh, volatility in terms of a day-to-day -day basis. You have result season. So today, even after an 80-pointer plus uh, positive impact of HDFC Bank, we are at a flat index as such because we have a Kotak Bank, Tata Consumer, or a lot of uh, result reactions. There can be some valuation correction, etc. So I think those things can be looked at because what I think is that uh, eventually the deep cyclicals will see much larger correction. And I would say that in the sector rotation, I would say people will look back at, 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 the, at the consumer space eventually. At this juncture, uh, we are more constructive in terms of positive outlook uh, on the pharma and the IT space, which is uh, especially the IT space which is showing some positive traction in terms of the momentum of various operating matrix. So I think this is how, how I would put it. It's uh, still Tara Consumer, Kotak Bank, along with Indusind. That's the one which is really weighing heavy on the markets right now. Tara Consumer uh, has barely seen any rebound play out. It's really been uh, down and out from the word go, a gap down, and then hasn't managed to resurrect itself. Still lower by a good 7% almost as we speak. Trent as well, lower by about 3% right now in trade. Kotak Bank, of course, has been languishing 5% lower there as well. Indescent Bank, too, is seeing a cut of about 3.5%. And then Ultratech Cement, too, lower by 2% as we speak right now. Bunch of other names which are, of course, reacting to their earnings. HDFC Bank, of course, turned out to be a good set. A uh, lot of brokerage reactions coming in for HDFC Bank's earnings, which came by over the weekend. Macquarie maintains the outperform target price of 1900 on the stock. IFL, again, a buy target price 1880 and Novama has also upped the target price all the way to 1960 right now. The board of course offer also uh, approved the OFS uh, of equity of up to about almost 10,000 crore rupees from the HDB financials uh, during the IPO. Techem, uh, the pad beat was clearly led by the one-off that they saw for RBL Bank, of course, it was a very weak set. We saw the way the stock gapped down when it opened in trade. About 10% is the kind of cut that RBL Bank saw for itself when it opened for trade. IFL, they maintained the ad though, uh, but they've cut the target price now to 195 on the stock. Still languishing and now a 14% cut is what you're seeing on RBL. For Yuko Bank as well, the numbers came out and the gross net NPAs have actually seen a dip down of about almost 14 basis points. Uh, there's been an improvement of about 5 basis points for the net NPAs too. Paris has seen an uptick of about 52%, although Yuko as well has eased off from the top of the day. Kunal, what's the take on the PSBs? X... Uh, SBI and do you see any trade here or would you say stick by with the private banking lot? Yeah, in fact, SBI is one of the strongest names so far on the uh, PSU banking lot. Other than, other than that, I think it's Bank of Baroda, which I think is nearing the level of uh, 250 approximately, 247, 250 is where it's trading right now. So that's another stock which is looking attractive in terms of a breakout. Uh, so there are two things which are happening for the PSU banking index. One is that uh, you know, from the PSU banking lot, we've seen outperformance coming out from the large cap to 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 uh, you know, stronger names, SBI and Bank of Baroda. The other and the most important one is that there has been a relative uh, outperformance or the, there's been a momentum jump into these PSU banking lot when you look at this comparatively from the 7th of October lows. So at a point when the Nifty has retested the previous lows of 24,750 approximately, the PSU banking stocks have managed to make a higher low as well as managed to break past, some of them managed to break past about the previous swing highs in the PSU banking uh, index. So that indicates that there has been a you know, less amount of selling and sort of more buying into the PSU banking name. So I think in that sense, one could probably expect that the likes of SPI, Bank of Baroda, they could st stand to outperform. I have not seen the uh, mid-cap end of the PSU banking charts uh, of late, but I believe that uh, if these large-cap names, SPI and Bank of Baroda, they start to move up higher, then I think eventually all the other stocks which have been uh, just about going through a drag over the last one or two months, they would also start to chuck along. 
So that's the way com that's the view coming in on SBI and some of these other gainers. Um, but manufacturing as a theme, Dhananjay, what's your uh, verdict on that? Of course, there was that laptop import policy at sector which was going to get rejigged. So Dixon and Amber were in focus on account of that. Amber today is up a solid 14% at the moment. And some other manufacturing companies as well, whether it's auto aims, etc., have been doing well. Do you think large part of this, uh, you know, a trade is well discovered now? Or do you still see upside on some of these names? So I think, uh, you know, uh, D D you know the Nick Dixon and all have actually seen uh, some expansion uh, in new areas and all. They have actually announced uh, those kind of ex expansion. I think there has been a run up in the in the in the stocks out there. Um, uh, so I think uh, uh, a lot of it is actually been priced in uh, the performance of Dixon, Amber and other uh, such players who are into, uh, you know, the electronic stuff. So I think there has been a significant uh, performance out there. So I would say that uh, for the manufacturing sector in general, uh, beyond these uh, select uh, sectors, I would say there is fairly intense competition. You know, if you look at uh, uh, with respect to, uh, uh, you know, metals, for instance, or even uh, other consumer goods, there has been a good amount of competition that is happening uh, from uh, from Chinese manufacturing and all. So I think those things will be there. You know, look at cement and all. Uh, there is a contraction in terms of the EBITDA uh, that has been there. So I think the large con large manufacturing sector, metals, for instance, you know, uh, a lot of these companies are showing almost like a, you know, 30 to 40 percent contraction in EBITDA. So I think there is a fairly intense amount of competition. Even in, if you look at chemicals, um, you know, the chemical sector is also seeing certain amount of com uh, fairly intense amount of continued amount of competition from from China. I would say select sectors in the chemical space, especially the the those relating to agrochemicals, fertilizer, etc. Those have been doing fairly well. So I think there has been domestic uh, momentum out there. So I need to be fairly selective about where the growth momentum in uh, is there when there is where there is a limited amount of competition from uh, from Chinese uh, imports? I think that's how one should look at it. Look at the manufacturing sector. So take coming in on the manufacturing sector, but yes, as you pointed out, cement etc. is in focus, and Ultratech cement started, or actually not started. It was Dalmia Bharat which reported a weak set over the weekend, and then Ultratech has followed suit. There's a margin disappointment that has come in, and margin disappointment is something that we have seen across the board for most of the companies this earning season so far. Maybe barring IT a bit, um, that has been the pain point in this quarter. In fact, let me now take it across to Ashesha to get more details on Ultratech's earning. Ashesha, at one point of time, the stock had nosed. Two and a half, three percent after the earnings, but it's recovering a bit now. Talk to us about the internals. Well, absolutely. Revenues are slightly higher than what we were working with at about 15,600 odd crores. But as far as margins are concerned, it has come in as a miss. 12.9% versus expectations of 15%. So it's, a, it's clearly a miss as far as margins are concerned. Remember, realizations have declined by about uh, uh, 8 odd percent on a year on year basis and 2.5% on a sequential basis in line with the fall in cement prices that we have seen over the last one odd year. So realizations clearly have fallen but higher costs have also impacted EBITDA per ton. Uh, we were working with a figure of 800 rupees per ton as far as yeah. spreads are concerned and it is coming at 725 rupees per ton. So it's clearly a miss as far as spreads and uh, margins and EBITDA per ton is concerned but their outlook continues to remain very strong. They believe that they will continue to report volume growth of about 7 to 8 percent over the next few years. They continue to focus on their expansion plan so they are eyeing 200 million ton capacity by FY28. So the long term plan continues to remain impact but as far as this quarter is concerned lower realizations and higher costs have impacted performance and it's a big miss as far as EBITDA per ton and as far as margins are concerned. Oh yeah, and Ultratech lower by about a percent and a half in trade reacting to those numbers. But Dhanajay, good to have you on the show. Thanks as always for taking the time out. Let me also take in some closing trading ideas as well. Nuresh, what's on your list? So that would be a buy on ICICI bank. The stock has been uh, stronger on a relative basis and holding on well. So expecting this to keep the leadership status. And what about your closing ideas? That would be a buy on Bosch. That's a chart which over the last two days has been relatively stable. The volumes have dipped down today for the stock. But relatively, I think 36,500 seems to be a very good support for Bosch. Okay. Um, we'll take a very quick break then on the
There comes a time when your heart calls for you to arise. Plant your feet solid into the ground. Decide your own limits and then break right through them. Become something more. It's my time to rise.